So Asura from Asura's Wrath is considered one of the most powerful video game characters out there. But how powerful is he actually? What feats has he performed and what enemies has he defeated? So when we first meet Asura, he is one of the eight demigods that protects the world from the impure beast called the Goma. He also has a daughter that has the ability to provide the demigods with what is called mantra. This mantra is an incredibly powerful buff that she can provide to anyone. When we go over the enemies Osir has defeated, we will most certainly be going over their transformations that they get into as well. So here are the abilities that we see Osir perform. Osir can breathe in outer space, can control himself when in outer space, and has been able to display controlling himself while in the air on Gaia, the planet. He can fire energy blasts from his hand. He doesn't age. There are several thousand years that take place throughout the entire game. When empowered by Mantra, he is able to transform into new forms, which we are going to get into in a bit. The source of Osir's power is his wrath. By unleashing his rage, he becomes more powerful. This is shared by Chakra Vartan, the creator of the universe, who we will be talking about as well. Asura was sent to Naraka, which is the Hindu version of Hell, where sinners are tormented after death, which is located beneath the Earth, which in this case would be the planet Gaia and Osir escapes several different times. And here's a list of insane speed feats Osir has performed. Being able to react to the Brahmastra firing an energy blast at him from outer space. This beam reaches the planet at a speed that is massively faster than light, and Osir is able to not only react to it, but come up with his own counter blast. The two biggest speed feats happen back to back when Chakra Vartan sends a blast across the solar system at Osir and Osir is able to react and defend from the blast, but we will get into that more in a second. Then right after, Osir is able to travel across the solar system and is ripping past planets to fight Chakra Vartan, who we are going to get into in a bit as well. Osir was able to jump from the ground floor of Gaia onto Shinto, which is Deus' base of operations past the atmosphere of Gaia. All right, the rest of the feats I want to go over are actually within the fights of Osir throughout the entire game. So first we have Wizen, one of the generals that worked with Osir later becomes one of the seven deities. When fighting Asura, we hear several times that all seven deities have grown in strength significantly in the 12,000 years that Asura was away. Wizen is being overwhelmed by Asura, transforms into his form, Vira Wizen. The two fight and Asura unleashes his six-armed form and throws Wizen into the atmosphere. Wizen uses the power from Asura's daughter to empower him, and he transforms into his final form, Gongen Wizen. This form makes him grow into a size that is larger than the planet. Wizen then tries to crush Asura. Asura not only withstands his power, but he also destroys Wizen by punching his finger so hard that the power of these strikes courses through Wizen's body. This feat alone is planetary, and this is only the beginning of his insane strength. Because after his defeat, it's shared that he was the weakest of the deities. Agus, Asura's old master. In the beginning of the game, Agus is considered more powerful than Asura by the commander Deus. And Asura is only able to pass Agus when receiving mantra from the priestess. Much later in the game, the two fight. The two head to the moon to have their fight to the death, and Asura is able to force August to unleash his form, Wailing Dark, which is August's sword. The only other person August has had to draw his sword against was Deus, meaning that Asura and Deus are a threat to August. The swing of August's blade is enough to sever portions of the moon. Several times during the fight, Asura is able to catch his blade and punish August at the same time. Then August is able to overwhelm Asura and pushes Asura off the moon and onto the planet Gaia. This planet goes through the entire planet and impales Asura the whole way through, going through the core of Gaia as well. When August is at the end of his blade, Asura is able to destroy the blade at the hilt. Asura is able to catch the broken blade with his teeth and then sweeps it across August, splitting him in two. After saving the humans from Goma, Asura gets to see how the deities are treating the humans that they used to protect. Olga, another deity, sends her armada to try and destroy Asura. Asura. But in the middle of this, the human town Asura is protecting is blasted into oblivion. This pushed Asura in a rage that we haven't seen before, and he wipes out the army when transforming into this new rage. With this new transformation, he gains the power that took the deities 12,000 years to accumulate, which is described by Olga to be 7 trillion souls that they have absorbed. When Olga attacks Asura with the Bamastra, it uses the power of 12,000 years worth of souls and is fired at Asura. This power is incredibly impressive, but what is the most impressive feat here is how fast the beam is moving, which we already went into with Asura's speed feats of it being massively faster than light. To add on to how this happens, 
happens, another deity doesn't believe in the way Olga is using the souls they accrued, and he goes to stop the waste of those souls. With this, he kicks the head of the Bamastra, and we see the beam of energy instantly cover where the head is facing. With the size of the planet and how the beam of energy is quickly traveling, this would massively faster than light. To circle back on how this is relevant to Asura, is that when the Bamastra unleashed its beam of energy at Asura, he was able to react and counter with his own energy blast by quite a bit of time, making his speed massively faster than light, like I mentioned earlier. Deus, the original commander of the Eight Generals, then the leader of the Seven Deities after the coordination of the betrayal on the Emperor. Deus was also the one that decided that they needed to kidnap Osir's daughter, Mithra, to use her power, and kept her prisoner for 12,000 years to provide them with mantra power. He is no slouch either, though. Being able to fight Osir and Yasha, who is now working with Osir at this point, who was another one of the generals who later became a deity. When he gets put under pressure, he receives more power from the Bamastra and takes a new form called Sakura Devanem Indra Deus. We hear from Olga that this form is the most powerful being in existence as well. Eventually, it gets down to Osir and Deus, who has fully empowered himself with Mithra, providing him mantra, and Osir is able to defeat Deus still. Now we have Viltra, who effortlessly was able to break through the core of the planet to take on the Bramastra at the beginning of the game. The demigods made weapon that they used to harm Viltra. Along with this, Viltra's impurity level is considered immeasurable, along with Deus describing its power as limitless, which may be able to take in as hyperbole simply because Deus himself wasn't ever able to defeat Viltra. Doesn't mean that they are limitless, it just shows the gap between the two and even being as powerful as he was doesn't hold a candle to Viltra in their newer awakened form. It is also worth noting that both Deus and the Emperor before he was killed knew that Viltra gets more powerful every time they come back. When Viltra returns after Deus is defeated, it is unbelievably more powerful than it was originally at the beginning of the game, and defeats Asura and Yasha. However, this whole time, we haven't seen Asura be empowered with Mantra from his daughter, and Mithra at this point was saved and is able to support her father in the fight. With her power, he transforms into Mantra Asura and is able to push his way through Viltra's core. Asura and Yasha are able to defeat Viltra for good with no hope of it coming back. And lastly, we have Chakravartin, and this being is on a completely different level than anyone I've listed previously, along with the fact that Asura does this without Yasha. So Chakravartin is a golden spider that helps Asura avoid death, and spoilers, is the creator of the universe. They are the one that bestowed the power of Mantra to the eight generals originally, along with creating the Goma to test them. Asura and Yasha fight Chakravartin and are sent back to Gaia. Asura is unable to recover with his body, not being able to sustain the power that he's emitting. Yasha then provides Asura with the Mantra Reactor, which contains the will of the seven deities. When Asura and Chakravartin fight again, Asura is able to reveal a new form called Asura the Destructor. This form transforms Asura into an enormous size, big enough to deflect a blast that Chakravartin sent at Yasura from across the solar system, and protect Gaia behind him from the blast. The two fight in space and Chakravartin is quite literally throwing everything at Asura. This includes moons, planets, dwarf stars, blue stars that range from 10,000 to 50,000 degrees Kelvin, and more. Their fight continues in an event horizon, which normally is the boundary around a black hole where not even light can escape, but in this case, it's a dimension Chakravartin created, which is shown in their fight. As the fight continues, we see Chakravartin attempt to hit Asura and destroys part of the dimension that they are in. With this, it sends Asura down to Naraka again, which is what we went over earlier is Hindu's version of hell. Asura is able to break through the dimensional barrier that put him there and ends back up at the event horizon. During their fight, Asura loses the power of Mantra and is back in his base form. At this point, Chakravartin is forced to transform into their final form, Chakravartin, the creator. They have arguably one of the best fights in video game history, and in the end, Asura is able to put an end to Chakravartin. With this, I'm going to scale Asura at Universal in his power with him being able to defeat the creator of the universe, Chakravartin. Arguably, one of the most underrated things about Asura is his ability to grow in power. At the start of the game, he struggles with Wizen on a planetary level to eventually defeating the creator of the universe. Obviously, he received a buff from the Monster Reactor, but still. Let me know if you enjoyed the video and what you think. If you want to see more, feel free to subscribe and let me know some recommendations. Appreciate you.